Hello there, everybody. I hope you've all had a wonderful work week. So how is your influencer marketing going these days? I mean, there's a lot of talk about influencer marketing becoming one of the primary, if not the primary ways that businesses are getting reached to new audiences in today's very crowded market space. Now, the thing is, when most of us think about influencer marketing, well, we still think of sort of the A-list celebrity, be it in B2B or B2C. And yes, I do know that there's a big difference between A-list B2B celebrities and A-list B2C celebrities. But, you know, even that's starting to change a little bit. You might have Matthew McConaughey now, who has a bone to pick with AI and data privacy, but he's picking that bone with, yeah, Salesforce.com. Or you might have Haley Bieber, wife of Justin Bieber, who has worked for Calvin Klein and Fila. And I would also note that my local Erewhon grocery store, well, I can now get the Haley Bieber smoothie, which will set me back about 20 bucks. Yeah, that's right, 20 bucks for a smoothie. So I'll let you make of that what you will. But for every big celebrity, there are now hundreds of smaller influencers working with companies of all sizes. Recent research from Influencer Marketing Hub, they, well, they said 24% of U.S.-based companies now spend more than 40% of their total marketing budget on influencers. But interestingly, another research report found that nano-influencers, and those are nano-influencers are fewer than 10,000 followers, so read, you know, small, well, they yield better ROI than some of the bigger A-list celebrities. So, which one is better? Is it better to go with a few big expensive influencers or do you go with many, many smaller inexpensive nano influencers? Well, there's a new wrinkle to add here. What happens when these influencers start going rogue? In our current season, right, election year, well, what happens when they start spewing heated political rhetoric or even just start talking about your competitors in a nice way or just, you know, have a bit of a toxic moment? Managing that portfolio of influencers may mean that you get a diverse set of thinking, but it also means you get a diverse set of actions as well. And some of them, well, they may not be the story you want to tell with your brand. You want to know a little more about who and what is influencing the influencers? Well, let's put on our brand safety goggles and get going. This is a few minutes of what's new in marketing that might help you lead your business strategy. Let's roll. Hello everybody, Robert Rose here with What's New in Marketing. It is What's New in Marketing, but most importantly, it's something important in marketing that we think may help you become a better leader. And if we can help you or your team with content marketing services, and that includes custom training or consultation or ongoing implementation of your content marketing approach, just come on over to contentmarketinginstitute.com, click on that form and fill it out and let's talk about it. Let's see if we can help. So influencer marketing, well, it's huge. And just like everything with marketing, artificial intelligence, yeah, it's making its way to the strategy. A new article in the New York Times speaks to this and the growing trend of brands using AI tools to scan in real time the social media influencers they're working with and giving them a grade of how likely they are to be taking strong political opinions on their channels. In this very politically charged atmosphere and very divisive atmosphere, well, brands of all kinds have been shying away from getting political out of fear of offending the very consumers they're trying to attract. And in fact, the Times article cites a Judiciary Committee hearing in July where a representative from WPP, you know, the big advertising conglomerate, well, they disclosed that news, mainstream news media, historically a major driver of ad dollar spend, was now down to less than 5% of its overall ad spending. We're just not, you know, we're not putting our ads on the news anymore. Also, just last week, X and its mercurial uh, CEO, Elon Musk, well, they decided they were going to sue a nonprofit amalgamation of many consumer brands that have banded together to say, yeah, they're not going to advertise on the X platform any longer. I mean, that's one way to handle this influencer challenge, right? Just stop supporting the platforms where brand safety is a challenge and your content is going to appear next to things that, you know, you consider antithetical to your company's focus. But the AI approach in grading is also really interesting because it puts an interesting lens on what it means to be an influencer on these platforms these days. If this technology can be used on the likelihood of influencers to espouse their political beliefs, well, know that it could also be used to analyze just about any other type of content, competition, whether they're having a toxic freakout over something, whether they have, you know, legal issues, whatever it may be. And this, this to me is the interesting tension that we're about to see come full circle in the world of AI, influencer marketing, and brand safety. 
One of the things that makes influencers influencers is how they can move back and forth fluidly between, you know, a transparency or, you know, a filtered view of their private lives and living in public with multiple brands and a more, well, let's call it performative type of activity. Put simply, today's G-rated influencer showing off their family, eh, it might be good for a kid's brand, but tomorrow, well, tomorrow it may be the not safe for work celebrity who ends up being arrested for something. So increasingly, I think we're going to see influencers have to monitor their brands in much tighter ways. And I think we're going to see brand become much more judicious about who they actually work with. And when it comes to numbers, it really makes things difficult. Do you manage 100 influencers where one of them is bound to go rogue and do something stupid? Or do you put all your eggs into one influencer basket and do the necessary background research and ongoing monitoring to make sure they're a good spokesperson for your brand? The answer isn't terribly clear at the moment, but it will be interesting to see how these tools begin to add things like grades, scores, and historical information about influencers, by the way. It's not going to be long till you can look at a report and go back in time and see not just what an influencer's current ratings are, but their brand safety grade over time. How have they done over the last few years? And see all the times that they've gone, well, let's just say out of the box, shall we? My take here is that influencer marketing is growing and will be an increasingly important of our overall go-to-market plan. Putting humans in recognizable and influential faces, it's going to be increasingly important as AI pervades our content ecosystem. But just like media buying, brand safety has become a specialized skill, and so will engaging, managing, and measuring influencer programs for brand safety. Who's currently working on that for your business? They need a framework, they need standards, they need a measurement approach that's appropriate for your company. And that will be a meaningful challenge to start to fill as a skill set in your marketing team in the months ahead. And that, well, that's a few minutes of what's new in marketing. Remember, it's your story to tell. Eh, go tell it well, will you? And influence somebody. Up to see you next week.